immediate risk. But if people really want to stonewall them, they will have to bear the brunt of executive power in search for justice, in search for law and order. What's your stand on the pork barrel? I personally, and it's in my uh, platform, I'm going to try to advocate uh, I'm going to advocate for the uh, abolition of the pork barrel. Total abolition. Total abolition. The pork barrel distorts the, 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 the planning and the disbursement of funds, limited funds of government, towards uh, building up a political patronage. You know, uh, when I announced my candidacy and a lot of people approached me, I was shocked to the extent of which pork barrel really defines traditional politics. A lot of Congress people, a lot of people want to run for Congress, part of this, because of the 70 or 200 percentage, 200 million that they get. And that's how they maintain their following. That's how they will keep their promises of people, personal favors, of employing them. This distorts what would be the rational allocation of scarce resources of government towards a strategic vision of the country. So it's there in my platform. I'm going to call, I'm going to advocate, because it's not in my power. It's in the legislative side. But I will develop a strong case. How can you push for something like that when, for example, the congressmen themselves will not want to abolish or to threat? Yeah, uh, you just have to deal with that since you're not in the congressional side. But one thing for sure will be done is the tip for that but my back, my back, my back, your back kind of transactional politics that people experience all this time. It would be on the basis of principles, clear vision, and for the good of the Filipino people. Okay. okay. Um, we'll move on now to the bar. Just a question. Okay. Because uh, Blog Watch is uh, a joint project with the Bal Foundation. Okay. Yes. Hi, Paul. I'm sorry if I have to remind you about this. But mm -hmm. the Kamalek has disqualified you earlier because they say that you do not have the party, the missionary, to wage a national campaign. And one of your um, um, opponents for the presidency said that, I'm not very sure about my statistics or my figures though, but he said that you need at least 30 million to run for president. Um, now that you have been reinstated and you're back in the race, how do you, you, you already said that you have um, networks in the provinces and all, but how else do you plan to introduce yourself? You know that um, uh, your opponents have had a head start since you were disqualified for a month we had that, and they've started to have advertisements, jingles, and all that. How do you plan to uh, introduce yourself to a wider um, yes. mass of voters? Okay. Uh, the, the major strategy remains the same. This is basically uh, the, the internet, the mainstream media, or the traditional media. And we are now in the process of, in our, in our core group, we're discussing the production of uh, videos. Uh, VCDs basically that can reach out to all the barangays of the country. We intend to distribute that to all the barangays. That's actually cheap. We made the calculation that probably that will only cost less than a million to do a production and a distribution of VCD introducing me to the Filipino people because I think uh, there's a lot of uh, VCD players. It's cheap. Uh, in the, I've seen them, I've, I've traveled to the rural areas, they, they, it's surprising what's there. They have a TV and then suddenly have this cheap thing that you can play a VCD. So, these non-traditional approaches, and then towards the end, okay, so we consciously wage a battle that uh, we slow burning, we call it slow burning, and then suddenly it surges. That's why I have always said, I don't believe, in, for me, Survey results are not important for me now or before. They will become more important towards the end. Okay, so I don't totally discount surveys. Uh, I've been training statistics, and if it's done properly, then it totally is you're able to totally determine. But also the way they front load the questions. And, I mean, but there's one thing I want to, in that connection, I want to say to, to Black Watch. I think uh, we should we should uh, ask the Filipino voters 
to really clearly understand that surveys, the way it's being used now, is actually an attempt to spin the 2010 elections. We, I think this is so important because it's a form of mind conditioning. That's why surveys are now more frequent than they were before. Because some of the top people on top, they don't want to, to kind of lose after a month. Kasi walang pesos. Oh, ito, every week, may kumalabas every 10 days may survey. O, nandun pa rin siya. O, whoever that person is on top. The top three, whatever. It's a form of mental conditioning. Because what's really more important is what is real substance that we want to happen in this country. And this is why we're going towards the more substantive approach. And that, uh, and then, and that's why I view the surveys as a kind of form of mental conditioning. And as kind of spinning. Now, towards the nearer the election time, when we have had a chance to really unravel the methodology of new politics, uh, which I will describe shortly. That's why you understand why it's, it's going to be like this. It's very visible that all of a sudden it's going to start to swell and really swell, and it's going to become a formidable fo force, like tipping point. It's you know it's invisible like an epidemic. It starts slow, and then you don't see that all of a sudden everybody's affected. And the reason is that, and this is what I believe is the political strategy of uh, new politics, which, by the way, now, uh, Formulek has legitimized, because this was my argument. New politics. Yeah, this new politics approach, and it said, this is a credible way to reach a national campaign. So they saw the, the, the logic of it. This is what I said. In the beginning is the vision. And that's why I was very open to primaries, because the vision and the agenda should have a reason uh, for people's concerns, for people's passion about certain issues. And then you try to create, you listen to what Filipino people, people are saying, create a vision. Now one, once that's there, and we do have that, we've created our own processes. The next thing is for people to ask, who has the track record, the, quali the, the, the character, the qualifications, to stand behind a vision? You may, you may announce something like that, but where's the track record of the person? Who would you believe more? Somebody who says there's a, there was a burning desire to end poverty uh, only for the last few months, or somebody's been doing it for 30 to 40 years, right? Who would be more believable there, character-wise? Who would be believable in, uh, in the corruption? If somebody would just all of a sudden say, get it all? out of the blue as a presidential candidate, or somebody who's actually risked his life to bomb threats, to sniper threats, to bullets, you know, assassination attempts, to stop corruption. Who, who among the two would be more credible than that? So once the person is there, and then the person is able to communicate to the public, whether to the internet, or to the media, or to other means, and which has been happening, then you're going to see the emergence of thousands of people who are going to identify themselves with that person. And that's also starting to happen. And then when they do that and it starts to swarm, because if you have a, you can just do the calculation, if there are thousands of people already like that, and they start speaking to their immediate family, and they convince them, it starts to spread. And then before you know it, you will have a nationwide organization and the resources to reach a national, a credible national campaign. So this is this has happened in the past. For example, in the case of Chilianes, somebody with zero, I mean, no funds, 